Boker Tov and Shabbat Shalom. Uh, welcome back to the Light to the Nations channel. In this video today, we will continue with the study of the last days. Um, we will continue with analysis, a deeper analysis of the great distressed events. Uh, so far, just uh, using our source of truth, the God of Yahuwah, we have been able to see different prophecies throughout the entire scriptures in the Brit Hasha and also in the Tanakh, um, analyzing different prophecies in order to build the timeline, understanding the chronology of events of the last days, and understanding what are the signs that uh, will help us to see when things are going to happen. You know, we have been able to study the prophecies in the book of Hasson, Revelation, the prophecies of Mashiach, in the Mount of Olives, according to what we saw in the book of Matidiahu, Matthew. Also, uh, prophecies on the book of Daniel. Uh, and as well, we saw part of the prophecies in the book of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, when he's talking about the time of Jacob's, Jacob's travel or Jacob's distress. So, it's, it's quite amazing because we have been able to see the amazing connection, the different keys on those, all of those prophecies throughout the entire scriptures that is helping us to understand the sequence of events, understand the signs, and also how amazing Yahuwah it is with us, uh, is with us in order to understand how to connect the dots, how to understand the keys in order to see the chronology of events. So, Today we will continue with this analysis and specifically we will talk about the book of Hasson, book of Revelation, Sefer Hasson, uh, chapter 13, um, when we have this uh, amazing prophecy about the two beasts, uh, um, because there are more information, more keys, more clues that will help us to understand the different events that are going to happen in the end times. And I have been sharing with you that uh, I feel in my heart that we are so close to the fulfillment of, of all, all, all of these prophecies that um, I believe that it's quite important that we understand the chronology of events. Uh, I told you in the last video that um, it's, important as well, it's important as well to understand the meaning of the prophecies, but uh, we are not doing that so far because uh, I think it's important to understand the sequence and the signs, and later it's important to dig a little bit more on the meaning of the prophecies. And we will include it as part of this study as well. The understanding the two beasts is, is quite important, and, and in this case we are, we are, we are going to analyze how the prophecies of the two beasts fit on the chronology of events and the timeline that we have built so far, and how this is connected with the great distress and the period of cleansing and refining. Okay, um, so we will do this analysis and as I have been inviting you, if you have some question after the study, you can always send me an email to light to every nation at gmail.com. Uh, I'll do my best to answer your question as soon as possible. And also me, me, my invitation, and I always like to remind you this, don't rely on my words, don't rely on men, we need to rely just in Yahuwah and his Devar, because here, in this amazing book, we find the truth. So, let's start, and we will see what we are going to find today. So, here we have the part number seven. This is the analysis of the great distress part number three and we are going to talk about the two beasts of Hasson 13 Sefer Hasson, the book of Revelation so let's move on uh, so we will we will read the entire book of Hasson uh, chapter 13, uh, 13 Revelation chapter 13 since the verse 1 to the 18 ok and it says the following and I stood on the sand of the sea. And just uh, before continue, a reminder, uh, keep in mind that the entire book of Hasson, as we saw 
in the part number two of this uh, of this study um, is the revelation that Yahushua Hamashiach received directly from Yahuwah Elohim. You can read this, check the video if you have not seen, uh, and you can read it directly in the chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Revelation. This is the revelation of Mashiach, and he sent that directly through a messenger to his servant, Yehohanan. Okay? So it's important you keep in mind because in order to understand and unlock the entire prophecies on the book of Hassan, we need to use the spirit of the prophecy and the spirit of the prophecy. We saw it in the first uh, two videos is Yahushua HaMashiach. He's the only one that can help us to understand all of this. Okay, so let's continue again. And it says, And I stood in the, on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads names of blasphemy. So, here we see the first beast, and it's important uh, what we are receiving here, that this beast is coming out of the sea. And as I told you, we are not going to analyze uh, the details of the prophecy, but it's important to understand the difference and the, the specific details that we are receiving, because those are keys that are going to help us to understand later what's the meaning of each one of these prophecies. So the first beast we see here is coming up out of the sea. And we see also uh, an specific um, details, a characteristic of this beast. It's having seven heads and ten horns. And also in on his horns is having ten crowns, and also on his heads is having names of blasphemy. And what are the meaning of the names of blasphemy? I think this is an important topic that we need to we need to discuss. You know, Yahuwah has been working with us in the last few years in order to restore a Kodesh language. And this Kodesh language, we have an amazing prophecy, I think it's in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah that he's going to restore a pure tongue in his people. So he's teaching us and helping us to understand why, what are the true names of the Father and the true name of the Son, the Mashiach. And, you know, there's a, a lot of discussion about what is the true name and there is different options on the uh, what is the name. You know, it's, it's not uh, good to have this kind of discussion. The, uh, and you know, the only one that can reveal us the truth about his real name is Yahuwah itself, himself. And he, he's going to do it directly in our heart. So you ha you're having some doubts about what's the name. Pray to Yahuwah. He will give you in your heart what is his real name. But the important point here that I, I want to, to mention is not the different different names that the, the, we that we have been started the, the, the journey, the way of Yahuwah, or the discussion that is with, be, between us. The point that I want to make here is that in the past and the religion and during centuries, we have been full with false names. And I think this is what we see here in the... Um, in the book of Revelation, in this first verse, is exactly related to that. On his head, names of blasphemy. I think, and what I feel in my heart, and what I understand, is that this is basically connected to the false names that we, we have been taught during so many years. And that's why Yahuwah is revealing us in these last days the real names. And that's why it's so important that we study the names and we understand what, what is his name, his real name. Maybe we're not going to be able to get to the exact uh, real name. But the only fact that we are coming out of Babylon, even on the names of the Father and the Son, this is something that Yahuwah is doing with us. And it's basically disconnecting us from Babylon and the system of the world. Okay? Let's continue in the verse 2. And it says, And the beast I saw was like a leopard, 
and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And this is quite important because it's also additional characteristics of the first beast that will help us to unlock and understand who or what is this beast. And if you if you are familiar with the with the visions and the prophecies in the book of Daniel, you will understand that there is an amazing connection with the prophecies and the visions that Daniel received. And this is something that I don't have it ready yet on this study, but my intention is to include it as well, because it's in the Debar of Yahuwah that we find the answers in order to understand who or what is this beast. Let's continue. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. And this is an important key. And I want you to keep it in your heart and in your minds and take notes of this. Because let me read it again. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. So in order to the uh, dragon give the power to the first beast, the dragon needs to be present on that moment. So first is the dragon and then the beast. Because how the beast is going to come out and receive the power if the dragon is not present. So this is very important because it's the dragon, the dragon itself, the one giving the power to the beast, to the first beast. And this is an important key. Please take note of this. We will see it later even in this same chapter and also uh, in the next uh, part of this series. Uh, we will see as well how this is connected, the connection between the dragon and the first beast. Let's continue, verse number 3. And I saw one of his heads as having been slain to death, and his deadly wound was healed. So this is also a characteristic that we need to take note. It's a key in order to understand and discover who or what is the beast, the first beast. So one head having been slain to death and the wound is healed. Let's continue. And all the earth marveled after the beast and they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. You see, we have here in the verse 4 a confirmation that the dragon is present because the entire air, the entire world marveled after the beast and also the entire, the entire earth and the, the entire world worship the dragon because the dragon gave authority to the beast. So the dragon is present. And we will see later on, the, on this series of studies that it, who is the dragon and how the dragon is the one bringing the first beast. And this is, we find it in the words of Shaul. We will see, I think, in the next part of the study, in the part number 8. So, let's continue. And they worship the beast. It's not only the worship of the dragon, also the worship of the first beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to fight with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great matters and blasphemies. And he was given authority to do so 42 months. And this is a quite important key and take note of this as well. The first beast received authority to do all what he need, what he's going to do for 42 months. And here we start in the same way that we saw in the prophecies of the Navi Daniel about the 1290 days and the 1335 days. We see also here a time the 42 months. And if you have not watched the, the studies of the calendar, my invitation is that go and check those videos as well. I have been sharing a lot of information about the calendar of Yahuwah and how he has been revealing to us in these last days his true calendar, the calendar of Yahuwah. And understanding the calendar of Yahuwah is a tremendous key and... Um, an important key in order to unlock and understand the prophecies because when we are talking about 42 months, this is based 
on the calendar of Yahuwah. And we need to understand that each month has a specific amount of dates. And in this way, we are going to be able to understand how and um, what is this period of time. We will see it in the next, next slide. So let's continue. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against Elohim, to blaspheme his name. And this is so important because what we see here is that he's talking about the first beast talking blasphemies against Elohim and against his name. And also, and his stand and those dwelling in the Shemayim. So, what is a blasphemy? And this is something that we need to understand it under, understand it under the light of the Devar of Yahuwah. And we have the ten words about how Kodesh is his name. That we know we don't we don't have to take his name in vain. So again, everything is related to his name, and this is also connected to the revelation of his real name in these last days. Also, that the first beast is talking blasphemies against Elohim. This is directly connected to the Torah of Yahuwah. Because all, anyone that is going against Yahuwah, against his Torah, against his eternal and everlasting instruction, is basically talking blasphemies. Because it's basically nullifying the word of Yahuwah. If they are saying that the Torah is not valid. So, and even those that are talking something different, talking about a different good news, as Shaul is writing, writing about in one of his letters, is basically talking blasphemies against Elohim. This is a tremendous topic and we can talk a lot, a lot of this, but it's important you take note of this and start studying about what is a blasphemy um, according to the Bar of Yahuwah. Because this is what we are going to see that the first beast is going to do. And actually we are seeing it today in the world. That the world is going astray and it's, we are living in the apostasy time. That there are the, the world and the system of the world is going totally against the way of Yahuwah. And this is basically talking and is related directly to blasphemies against Elohim. Let's continue in the verse 7. And it was given to him to fight with the Kodeshim and to overcome, overcome them. Uh, and authority was given to him over every tribe and tongue and nation. So we see here an important thing and we will see the connections in the next slide. Is the first beast that has the authority and has the, um, the responsibility somehow in the prophecy, from the prophecy's point of view to fight with the Kodeshim. Who are the Kodeshim? The saints, the believers, the chosen ones, okay? To fight with them and to overcome them. So we see here that we have a tremendous connection and by doing this connection we can understand when the first beast is coming up. Because is he the responsible to fight with the chosen ones and to overcome them? What does it mean that he's going to overcome them? It means that the chosen one, those ones that are going to be overcome, is basically are going to suffer, are going to be persecuted. They are going to go through a great distress. So we see that this is going to happen when the first beast will receive the authority for the 42 months during this period of time. He is the one persecuting the chosen ones, the Kodeshim, and during this period of time, he's going to overcome them. Important to keep this in mind. And also, what we, read, uh, we are reading here, the, um, if we continue, it says, An authority was given to him over every tribe and tongue and nation. So it's basically the first beast is receiving authority over the entire world. Every tribe, tongue, and nation. And we already saw that for how long he's going to have the authority is written over here. He was given authority to do so 42 months. And who gave him or is going to give him the authority to do so is the dragon. The dragon who gave authority to the beast. 
So we see, you see, basically just reading the specific lines and understanding the specific keys in this chapter, in this book, we can see the sequence of events and how these keys are connected, connected each other. Okay, let's continue verse 8. And all those dwelling on the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the slain lamb, from the foundation of the world, shall worship him. So here we see a differentiation. And also we see an important key is talking about the book of life of the slain lamb. And we see names that are written in the book of life. And not everybody is written in the book of life. And those that are not written in the book of life are going to worship the beast. And also, as we saw, they are going to worship the dragon. So this is an important key because we also saw in the previous videos, I think in the, in the previous video, in the part six, when we talk about the prophecies of the Navi Daniel about, about the book. And we will see it because here we see we have the answer about what is the book. Is the book of life of the slain lamb. So let's continue in the verse 9. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who brings into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword has to be killed with the sword. And he's talking about persecution, he's talking about death. And we saw the same words, similar words, in the mouth of Yahushua Hamashiach in the prophecies of the Mount of Olives about persecution and death and here we have the connection here is in the here is the endurance and the emunah the faith the belief emunah in Hebrew of the Kodeshim so it's basically the endurance and it's written and we saw it who uh, those that endures until the end will be saved endurance during this period of time Emunah, the Emunah, the faith of Yahushua in our heart. This is what Yahushua again is telling us in this revelation. Okay, let's continue the verse 11. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And here we see the second beast. Okay, and in this case we also see a characteristic. This one is coming up out of the earth. The other one was coming up out of the sea. So we need to take note of this. And he had two horns like a lamb. Okay, Over another characteristic. And I spoke like a dragon. So we see the connection again with the dragon. And also there is an amazing connection also in the, this book. We will see it later about the three spirits coming uh, from the mouths of the dragon, the first and the second beast. Uh, verse 12 and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence again we are talking about the authority of the first beast and we know that the authority is for 42 months and the authority was received by the dragon so the second beast is exercising the same authority during the same period of time okay and it's the authority that both received from the dragon Okay, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So we see what's going to happen at the end times that everything is going to be related to worship. Those that are, that are going to worship the dragon and the first beast and those that are not going to worship the dragon or the fist. Those that are not going to worship them are going to get persecuted. Okay, and keep in mind the, the story that we saw in the book of Daniel when everybody was worshipping the statue of the king except Daniel, okay, and except his friends. So it's important how we see the patterns, how we see the parallels, even the answers from the bar of Yahuwah from the beginning. Okay, let's continue. Uh, verse 13, and he does great signs so that he even makes fire come down from the Shemaim on the earth before men. So false prophets, great signs. We are seeing a lot of this in, in our times as well. Okay. 
and he leads astray those dwelling on the earth and this is so important because he is leading astray the world okay and why because of those signs people are so uh, connected with the signs that if they see something they start to believe in the in the person doing the signs so that's why the what is written in in, in the Barim chapter 13 i think or 12 in the test of the prophets is so important to understand because we can we we cannot believe only on the signs we need to see the fruits of the people and the fruits are from righteousness or not and those fruits is basically connected directly the, to the ruach hakodesh and the torah of yahuwah okay so that he even makes fire come down from the shamai on the earth before men and he leads astray those dwelling on the earth because of those signs which he was given to do before the beast saying to those dwelling on the earth to make an image to the beast important he's gonna create something an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword yet lived and there was given to him to give spirit to the image of the beast also there is another aspect of this prophecy beside the two beasts we are talking about an image of the beast so the second beast is giving spirit to the image to the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause to be killed as many as would not worship the image of the beast so we see here that for those not worshiping the image of the beast not worshiping the beast not worshiping the dragon okay and he causes all both small and great and rich and poor and free and slave to give to be given a mark upon their right hand or upon their foreheads so it's basically the second beast pushing the entire world uh, 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 to give worship to the first beast and the dragon and also to receive the mark on the right hand and the forehead uh, foreheads uh, verse 17 and that no one should be able to buy or sell except he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is the wisdom he who has understanding let him calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 666 all of this you know is a quite important information and deserve a, a specific study but the important thing is that this number and this mark everything is related to worship okay and there is an important connection as well in my belief with the nephilim and with the religions of the world the world during the entire uh, history you know so uh, we will include uh, an analysis of this uh, of these prophecies uh, on this study but later you know what we are trying to understand now is the chronology of events okay so just reading this we find a lot of information a lot of keys and it's important to take note of all of them so let's review the keys the 7.1 is the first beast basically the one coming up out of the sea and we saw the characteristics of this beast this is the key number 7.2 the seven heads the ten horns and the ten crowns and also the names of blasphemy as we were talking before this is quite important because it's talking directly about names and why so important because it's my belief that the names somehow are directly are going to be directly connected with the great illusion that the shaul is talking about in one of his letters so that's why this is highlighted here okay the key 7.3 also the characteristic of the first beast like a leopard feet of a bear mouth of a lion and as i told you this has a direct connection with the visions of the navi daniel the prophet daniel the seven the key 7.4 and this is the important point that i i told you to take note of it the dragon gave him his power so the power of the dragon somehow is also given to the first beast by the same by the dragon himself 
and the dragon is giving his throne to the first beast and also great authority. So the only way that this can happen is that the dragon is present on earth before the first beast appears. Okay, so uh, and we will see a second witness in the in the next video why this needs to be in this way that the dragon is coming first and then the second uh, the first beast. So the important question we can have here is that who is the dragon? Yeah, we can we can see it or we can say it because we already studied this. But it's important that we see it directly from the answer, directly from the Bar of Yahuwah, as I have been telling you always to do. And we don't see the answer here in this chapter. We need to look in another place of the of the scripture in order to understand the answer to this question of who is the dragon. We will see it in the um, in the part number ten, most probably of this study. Okay, so the key number 7.5 is one of his head slain and deadly wound is healed. This is also a key in order to identify who is the first beast. Okay, and the key 7.6 is that the air, the entire world, worship the dragon and the first beast. So if we check the key number 7.4, is basically what I was telling you. The dragon is present on earth in order to receive worship important to keep that in mind and the 7.7 .7 is the authority for 42 months that, that the first beast received and i was telling you that if you study and if you have not do, uh, done it uh, yet please do check the studies of the calendar because you will see that the calendar of yahuwah each month is having 30 days exactly so if we calculate this the 42 months multiplied by the 30 days we end up with the 1260 days and this is a so important numbers we will because we will see it repeated in different places on the scriptures we see that this is exactly the three and a half year and also has an important connection with the 1290 days that we saw in the book of daniel in the previous previous video so keep in mind that the uh, understanding the yahuas calendar is that the there are four uh, intercalary days, and those four intercalary days are counted in the reckoning of the year, but not in the reckoning of the month. So, if we are receiving this timeline, this 1260 days, that is uh, basically the calculation of the 42 months using Yahuwah's calendar, we need to understand that these four intercalary days we need to include it as part of the 1260 so it's not going to be 1260 it's going to be more than that including the four intercalary days per year so this is quite important to understand it and that's why the calendar of Yahuwah and the revelation of his calendar in these last days is so important to unlock the prophecies and unlock the timeline so Again, it's 42 months that the beast is going to receive authority. And every month, according to Yahuwah's calendar, is 30 days each. So, we need to understand that during the year we have four intercalary days that are not reckoning in the month, but are reckoning on the year. So, we need to include in the entire analysis those four intercalary days in addition to the 1260 days important for you to keep in mind that information okay the key 7.8 is basically the first beast speaking great blasphemies against elohim and against his name his real name okay the 7.9 and this is quite important i told you the first beast is going to be the one fighting with the Kodeshim and it's going to overcome them. And if we see the key 4.3, and this is, we review it in the part number 4 of this study. Let me show it to you. This Basically, the key 4.3 is this one, when we were studying the Sefer Hasson chapter 6. is related to the fifth seal 
we saw that there is going to be a number of chosen ones that will die and this number needs to be completed. This is directly connected to the time of the great distress. And Yahushua himself was talking to us in Matthew chapter 24 and let me read it for you. It says the, the following in the Matthew, Matthew chapter 24 verse 22 it says, And if those days were not shortened, he's talking about the great distress time, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen ones, those days shall be shortened. Okay, so it's basically, it's talking about exactly the same period of time. Okay, it's talking about that the first beast is going to overcome the chosen ones. And he's going to kill some of the chosen ones because a number needs to be completed. We see this important connection here. Okay. And he received authority over all the world. So it's basically one, one, uh, one government, one world government. And we know that the, the world or the system of the world has been pushing for this idea for so long. And nowadays there are so many discussions and the, the world somehow is prepared to have just one world government. This is the only thing that is missing because we have just an economy that is so connected, the technology is so connected, the, the te um, is, is so connecting us, connecting us, is basically we are living in a, in, in a global, global country, in a global system, that we know every day what's happening on the other corner of the earth, and any impact on the, on the economy or the financial system that is happening in one corner of the earth is impacting the other one and we see the news about how the the geopolitical discussion is happening and how a war in the middle east is impacting the entire world so the only thing that is missing actually again the technology we see the technology and the the progress on the technology is that somehow the world is pushing that in order to have regulations uh, worldwide regulations basically because the technology is connecting us uh, and is basically giving us the possibility to work in, uh, without any border so i saw some news in this week that somehow people or these great great uh, technologies companies are pushing somehow to have these worldwide regulations and this is basically one of the step or the final step in order to push the idea of just one world government what is called by many the new world order okay so let's continue those are the keys related to the first beast and also we see here that in the key number 710 is basically those that are not written in the book of life of the lamb will worship the beast will worship the dragon so everything is related to worship so if we see we also talk about the book in the key uh, 6.2 so this one the this key the 710 is directly connected to the key 76.2 uh, and let me show it to you we discussed this in the previous video and this key the 6.2 is what we saw in the book of the Navi Daniel it says deliverance for everyone who is written in the book and we had this open question which book so we see the answer amazingly on um, other book of the uh, the bar of Yahuwah is talking about the book of life and who is the owner of this book the lamb okay so who's going to be the, who's going to be uh, is going to be receiving the deliverance only those that are written in the book of life of the lamb and those that are not written in the book of life they are going to worship the beast Okay, and the important thing that we see also the light in this book is that uh, in the book of Hasson, the book of Revelation, is that this book, the book of life of the Lamb, has existed since the foundation of the world. It's a book that has been always be uh, existed. So basically, basically, if our names are written in this book, 
and my hope, and I, I know that your hope as well, is that our names are written there. And you know, if, if Yahuwah has taken our hands and has leading us to this amazing journey in his the bar of Yahuwah in his way, it's because somehow he's given us a confirmation that our names are written there. But it's our responsibility, it's our, it's our job now to endure until the end in order to be safe, okay? And receive all the promises on the Devar of Yahuwah. So important and amazing way to find the answers directly in the Devar of Yahuwah as well. So we see, and the, this is the key 7.11, is that the second beast coming up from the earth. And this beast has a specific characteristic. It's two horns like a lamb and speak like a dragon. And this is the, 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 um, the key 7.6 is basically talking about the, the dragon. We see that the, the air worship the dragon. So it's the second beast that is pushing for the, for the worship and is, is speak like a dragon. He's representing somehow the same dragon. And the next uh, key, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here, is the 13. Great signs and wonders is the second uh, beast. And also he's leading astray all the people. And I, I want to, to um, all the world basically, I want to give you um, something we, we read in Matthew 24 when we're analyzing the, the words of uh, Yahushua. Uh, Yahushua is telling us when he was talking about the great distress period in the chapter 24, verse 24, the following. For false messiahs and false prophets shall arise, and they shall, and they shall show great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. So basically, we see the confirmation from Yahushua himself that the false prophet, the second beast, is going to be a false prophet. It's going to be a false messiah. That he's going to do great signs in the same way that we see in, the, in this amazing book. And he's going to lead astray the entire world. And even he's going to do so amazing things that even he's going to be somehow trying to lead astray the chosen ones. We see it in the words of Yahushua. That's why we have the warning from Yahushua himself that we need to endure until the end and that the chosen one are going to be present during this period of time. And he is the one, and this is going to be the 14, that's going to push for the image of the first beast. And this is another key that we need to keep it in mind and take note, and we need to study this. And again, he's going to a command to uh, kill those that are not watching the beast. And we see here the connection with the great distress that is going to be a distress. This is the, the key 4.3 that we already saw it. And also the key 7.9 that the first beast is going to be the one fighting with the Kodeshin and overcome them. So we see that the second beast is going to exercise the authority of the first beast. We saw that. And that's basically do the persecution of the Kodeshim and kill the Kodeshim, okay, in order to complete the number. We see how everything is connected, uh, and we are connecting the dots on the on the prophecies. Also, we saw that in the book of uh, Daniel about the great distress such never before, and we saw also uh, the same thing in the words of the Yahushua Hamashiach. And also we saw an important key, the 6.5, that is going to be a period of cleansing and refining. So everything is related, everything is connected to the period of the great distress. And all of, all, everyone that is not worshipping the beast is going to be, be persecuted. Okay? Also, we have the mark of the beast. It's going to be the key 715. Okay? And the... Those that are not having the mark of the beast are not going to be able to buy or sell who doesn't have the mark or the name or the number. So this is directly related to the economic system. It's directly related to work. Those that are not having the mark of the beast are not going to be able to work. Those that are not having the mark of the beast are not going to be able to uh, participate in the economic system. 
as the we know it today or maybe a new or renewed economic system that everybody is talking about and I truly believe that it's going to happen okay so important to understand also is talking about the number of the beast and this is important in order to understand the mark of the beast okay it's a number of a man is 666 so the important here that I want to remark and highlight that until now all the world is present even the chosen ones we don't see any indication of something different so far in the different prophecies we have been analyzing all the world even the chosen ones are going to be present during this period of time so it's important that we believe in the word of Yahuwah it's important that we believe on what he's talking to us because he's talking to us and giving us all this information in his devar. It's not my words. We are just reading the devar of Yahuwah. That we need to prepare ourselves for what is coming to the world. And I truly believe that it's coming so soon. So that is important that we trust in him only. And we trust in his word. And we prepare ourselves trusting on him. In order to overcome and to endure until the end. Because if we endure until the end. We are going to receive an amazing Bereha, an amazing blessing. And we will see that as part of this study as well. So let's check the timeline. You know, this is the timeline that we have been built so far. And we see the different aspects of the events that are going to happen on the Shamayim and the events that are going to happen on the earth. Okay? So we are analyzing on details this period of time. Of the great distress and again as I told you uh, on the last videos we are using the updated timeline with the new information the new revelation that I was able to receive uh, that the 290 days are lasting after or somehow uh, uh, related to the signs on the Shamayin and the sign of the Venadam and the 45 days in order to complete the 30 1,335 days are going after this period of time. And also what I was telling you, the, that the sign of the Ben Adam and the harvest are two events, uh, separate events. Okay, so this is the updated timeline. So the important thing here we see that the first beast is going to be the one having authority in order to fight and overcome the Kodeshim. So... The only way that this is going to happen is that the first beast needs to appear before the great distress appear, uh, start. Sorry. So, basically, the first beast we are going to include it here on the timeline is appearing before the great distress begin. And we saw already that the great distress begin, we will see two important things that the abomination that lays waste the abomination of desolation desolation is going to be established or set up in the temple mount okay also we saw that the armies is going to be surrounding jerusalem and also we saw an important information on the book of daniel that when michael the messenger of yahuwah stand up to the shaman is basically the moment when the great distress will start so the first piece is going to appear in and a period of time close to those events before the great distress begins. So we are going to include it as I said in this part of the uh, timeline. And we already saw in part of the keys that is the first beast the one that is going to fight with the Kodeshim and are going to overcome them. Okay. So it's basically talking that this fight and persecution of the Kodeshim is related directly to this period of time of the great distress or the time of Jacob's distress and the authority is for 42 months so basically this authority is going to be within this period of time it's going to be within these 1290 days and we will see basically in the in the, in the part number 10 of this study how we can understand that the great distress is directly connected to the same period of time okay also, we saw that the second beast appeared after the first beast. So, and we saw that it's the second beast that the one exercised, exercising the authority of the first beast. Okay, so 
we will include it in this place as part of the um, of the timeline because we know this happening after so we will include it here just for to represent that this is happening after the second um, after the first uh, beast appearance but the important thing we see here is that the second beast is the one pushing and forcing the mark of the beast and he's the one pushing in order to have to kill those that are not worshiping worship the beast or the dragon it's basically those that are not receiving the mark of the beast are not going to be able to buy or sell without the mark so this is directly related to the persecution they are going to persecute those ones that are not receiving the mark those ones that are not going to worship the beast so it's directly connected to the beast or the system of the beast fighting with the Kodashim and it's directly connected to the great distress and we know that both beasts are receiving the authority to do all of this during 42 months okay so it's basically what we can conclude here and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to include it now in this slide because we have we need to have the, uh, an additional witness that the great distress all this period of time is going to last the 42 months the 1260 days okay and this is three and a half year in the same way that we saw in the book of daniel when daniel was asking how long in order to all of this to happen and the messenger that was standing uh, at the middle of the river said for time times and have a time three and a half year and three and a half year using the calendar of Yahuwah is 1260 days if we count just the months counting just the months we have and each month having 30 days we have 1260 days and 42 months is three and a half years so it's important to understand that to those periods of time we need to add the four intercalary days per year so we see how we are building again the timeline and how everything is connected so important thing here and i want you to keep in mind and i mentioned this twice already is that the dragon is the one giving the authority to the first beast so is the dragon the one that needs to be present on earth in this period of time before the great distress and we will see this in the part number 10 in more details and we will see how this is so amazingly connected to another prophecy on the devout of Yahuwah so this is what I had prepared for today I hope that the information was clear I hope that the message that I'm receiving from Yahuwah and sharing with you is going to help you in your journey uh, again as I told you at the beginning we need to rely on Yahuwah and his word he is the only one that can help us to receive the insights is the only one that can help us and give us the understanding to to his word okay so uh, we will see in the next parts of this study how all the other prophecies are connecting so amazingly in, 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 in harmony basically to what we are seeing here and it's important that uh, you study these videos uh, take take your version of the, the scriptures and read the, the information we are taking here take all the notes you can you can you can take and it's important that you study by yourself don't rely just in my words do your own research is the Ruach HaKodesh the one leading us and guiding us so it's important that you receive this input and do your own research and your own study and if you find something or, or if you have any question or any comments it's important that you share this information you can send me as I have inviting you an email to lie to every nation uh, at gmail.com it's important that if you are seeing something share it I can use this channel in order also to include uh, what you are receiving as part of the uh, of these studies because each one of us is receiving a piece of the puzzle so it's important that we keep keep us building ourselves the value of Mashiach 
with what we are receiving directly from Yahuwah. Okay? Um, so, in the next part, in the part number eight, what we're going to review is when will the first beast appear? And this is going to be analyzing the words of Shaul in the book of Thessalonikim, that this is Second Thessalonians. So, this is going to be an additional clue in order to confirm that the first beast is appearing in before the great distress. We will analyze this in the next part, in the part number 8. So far, um, this is a study. Uh, keep in mind and remember that tomorrow is uh, Hak Shavuot, the Feast of Shavuot. So, this is also an, so amazing and important feast because it's directly connected to the prophetic calendar of Yahuwah and what's going to happen as part of the very hot we will receive at the end times it's going to happen on Shavuot we will include this as part of this study so don't forget tomorrow is Shavuot we need to celebrate with all our heart with our Abba it's an important feast it's the feast as I was sharing with you in the in the study of the Rashid Katsir it's the real feast of the first fruits or the first born so we need to celebrate it and we need to understand the meaning and the importance of the feast. So, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for following these studies. Thank you for your support, your support and your prayers. And I hope you're going to enjoy this Shabbat. And also you are going to enjoy Shabbat. Uh, so, Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Yahuwah be with you. See you in the next video.